The title to this section is Systems of Linear Equations in Two Variables. Each problem that's presented in this section is going to give me the equations of two lines, and we're going to be asked to determine what happens when I graph those two lines. And once I determine what happens when I graph those two lines, I'm going to write a solution. At First, we're physically going to graph the lines to figure out what happens when I graph the two lines. And then we're going to learn some algebraic techniques so that we can know what would happen if we graph without having to graph the lines. So each problem in this section, you'll get two different equations for lines. And when I have two different equations for lines and I go about graphing them, or to figure out theoretically what happens when I graph them, there's three possibilities of what might happen. The most common occurrence when you graph two separate lines is that they cross and they meet in one point. That's one of the three things that can happen. And if that happens, we'll learn how to describe the answer to that system of equations. And this is the most common thing that happens when I... I solve systems of equations that have two equations that graph into lines. Another thing that could happen when I graph the lines is that they could be parallel lines that don't meet. And a very uncommon thing that could happen is when I graph the two lines, they wind up graphing on top of each other and actually being the same line. So I'm going to go through examples of each one of these. I'm going to give you a system of linear equations, meaning systems, meaning in this case, two equations that graph the lines that have the variables X and Y. So they have two variables. I'm going to graph them. I'm going to see what happens when I graph them. And then I'm going to describe the solution to the system of equations after I sketch the graph. So we have to remember graphing from the first few sections in this chapter. So for each of the problems between 1 and 6, I'm going to graph separately the equations that are presented. And I'm supposed to know the best technique for graphing based on how the equation is written. The, both the equations in number 2 are written in general form. When the equation is written in general form, I like to find intercepts to graph as long as one of the intercepts or neither of the intercepts is a fraction. So for the first equation that's written in number 2, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. And the algebra is going to give me y equal to 8. And I'm going to plot the point 0, 8 without even writing the point. I don't need to have the, the name there. And then I'm going to plug in 0 for y. And that's going to give me the point 8, 0 because I got 8 for x when I plugged in 0 for y. And now I'm going to graph this the best I can. Uh, for these few problems, using graph paper is, is not the worst idea because you'll get a more accurate answer than if you're just freehanding. So that's an adequate graph for x plus y equal to 8. I didn't put the arrows at the end. I didn't label the intercepts. And I only found two points. Two points is the minimum I can do to graph a line. And I'm doing the bare minimum right now. This is actually the third time I'm doing this portion of the video. So hopefully I don't short you too much. So for the bottom line, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let x equal to 0, which is going to give me 0 minus y equals to 2. And that 0 minus y gives me minus y equal to 2. Minus y I can write as minus 1y because that will help me figure out what y is because now I can tell I need to divide by negative 1. 
When I divide by negative 1, I get y equal to negative 2. So on my second line, I'm going to start off by plotting 0, negative 2, which is a point on the x-axis. I'm going to next let y be 0 and get x minus 0 equals 2. That gives me x equal to 2, and that's going to represent the point 2, 0. Two points is the minimum for graphing a line. I'm going to do the minimum now and graph this line the best I can. This clearly is a situation where the graphs meet in a single point. That's the most common. And when the graphs of the lines meet in a single point, there's a single unique solution. But the solution is just not like x equals. The solution is the actual coordinates of the points where the graphs cross. I claim that the solution to the system of equations presented in problem 2 is the point 5, 3, because that's the coordinates of the point where the lines cross. I can always check problems that I get a unique solution and it's easy to check. To check the solution that you generate is correct, you should separately in each equation take the value of x and y from the point, plug them in for the x and the y in the equation and make sure it produces a true statement. So in the line x plus y equal to 8, I'm going to plug in 5 for x and 3 for y and I'll get a true statement for the x minus y equal to 2 I'm going to plug in 5 for x and 3 for y and get a true statement so I think I've done the best I can the, this system of equations has a single solution it's the point 5 3 and I've checked it and once we get to like problem 7 and beyond we're going to learn how to solve this without doing graphing because graphing gets to be really, really tedious. Um, if the, you know, it's hard to get a accurate enough graph for most systems of equations if you're not using technology, just because the numbers get crazy sometimes. So I'm going to do number four, same style. Of problem I'm given two equations that will graph the lines from what we've learned earlier in this chapter you're hopefully have an idea of the best strategy to go about graphing a line based on how it's presented to me and in problem four both lines are written in y equals mx plus b form so I can graph them without having to find the intercepts for number four, um, I'm going to graph by plotting four on the y-axis. And then I'm going to use the slope to help me get another point. And the slope in problem four is the number in front of the x, which is three. I need to think of that three as three over one. And then after I plot 4 on the right y-axis, I'll go up 3 and write, write 1 to get another point. So 4 on the y-axis, I almost plotted 3. And then up 1, 2, 3, write 1. move on to the second line y equals 3x plus 6 and I'm going to graph it similarly because it's written in y equals mx plus b form. For this one I'm going to plot 6 on the y-axis. It has the same slope so I'm going to do the same strategy. After I plot 6 on the y-axis I'm going to go up 3 
and write 1 because the slope is 3. And I could write that as 3 over 1. And that would tell me to go up 3 and write 1. So plotting 6 on the y-axis, going up 1, 2, 3, write 1. Now I'm going to graph those best I can again. Those lines are parallel, and I should have known they're parallel because both lines had the same slope, and lines that have the same slope are parallel. When you get this situation, I can't really check an answer because I'm trying to find where the graphs intersect, and if they don't intersect, we say there's no solution. There's a mathematically elegant way to say no solution, and that's using the word inconsistent. So there's two nice answers for this. Either I would say there's no solution, or the more mathematically precise word is to say that this is an inconsistent system of equations. I'm done, but I mean, probably should plant some seeds for when we're doing algebra. When we're doing algebra and solving these problems by graphing, how I can tell when I get an inconsistent or a no solution is when this happens. So using algebra, this is the situation that happens when two things simultaneously happens. I'll say both letters drop out so I'm going to be left with no letters. Probably should say variables, but I chose letters. So both variables cancel or drop out. And a false statement remains. It's a little premature for this, but it's worth having in your notes because it's what we're going to need to know. So. Using algebra, I might wind up with something like this. On either side of an equal sign, I might have something like 7 equals to 5. If my algebra led to a statement like this, variables gone and I'm left with a false statement, then immediately I would say this is a no solution. That may not make any sense right yet, but I'll probably pull this sheet back when I get to a problem that has no solution and when we're actually doing the algebra. And my enemy, twice I've done this wrong. I made a different mistake each time. And I still can't find a program to edit videos that isn't free. And I'm just hoping that I could do it right this time because this is gonna end this part of the section. I'm going to do three sections. We're going to solve the problems using three different strategies, graphing and then two different algebraic techniques. So for number six, I'm going to graph the first line and it's written in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to plot negative five on the y-axis and then the slope is three over two. So I'm going to go up 3 and write 2. So plotting negative 5 on the y-axis, not particularly hard. Going up 1, 2, 3, write 2. One of my mistakes is I only went right 1. I don't know why, but I only did. And I didn't find it. It took me forever. I just stared like a not bright person to figure out what happened, and I couldn't figure it out. So let me graph this with a lighter marker so that you can see that the next line is going to coincide on this and it's actually the same line. The first mistake I made was graphing this second line. It's not that hard but I made a big deal out of it and messed it up. So let me now graph 2y minus 3x equals to 10, negative 10. I forgot the negative sign when I graphed this and I got it wrong. So, um, I can still find one intercept. If I plug zero in for y, 
that's going to not be good because um, the y part will drop out and I'll have to divide by negative 3 to find the x and that's going to give me a fraction. I'm not going to plug 0 in for y. But if I plug 0 in for x, I won't get a fraction because I'll need to divide by 2 and that's good. So I'm going to start off by letting x equal to 0 and I'll get 2y minus 3 times 0 equals minus 10. That's going to leave me with 2y minus 0 equals minus 10, which is just 2y equals minus 10. And then I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and get y equal to negative 5. And ooh, that's the point 0, negative 5. And this is cluing me into, like, these lines are going to be the same. I already have that point plotted. My second point is tricky because I, I don't want to just plug in 0 for y. That's going to give me a fraction. Because the y has an even number in it, front of it, and because the 10 is even, if I plug an even number in for x, then everything's going to be even, and I'll be able to divide by 2. That's in front of the y without getting a fraction. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off from this point. I'm going to let x be any even number, and I like the number 2. So I'm going to go 2y minus 3 times 2 equals negative 10. That's going to give me 2y minus 6 equals negative 10. Add 6, add 6. That gives me 2y equals minus 4 and then divide by 2, divide by 2, that gives me y equals negative 2. In terms of a point, I plugged in 2 for x, I got negative 2 for y, that's going to represent the point 2, negative 2. And just coincidentally, that point's also already graphed. When I go to graph the second line, well it even has the same points as the first line, so those two equations, even though they looked different, they graph to be the same line. This is the worst of the situations because I have to write my answer very fancy. Um, any point on the line is a solution, and this line has infinitely many points. Any place I could make a dot on the line, that value of x and y, like this looks like the point 0.64, the point 0.64 should be a solution to this system of equations. This appears to be the point 0.41. The point 0.41 should be a solution to this system, meaning it works in both equations. Let me just show you real quickly that this point 0.64 works in both equations by going to the top line, y equals to 3 halves x minus 5, plug in 4 for y, and 6 for x. This is going to give me 4 equals 2. And I need to cancel this here. This becomes a 1. That becomes a 3. I'm left with 3 times 3, which is 9, minus 5. So into the top equation, if I plug x equal to 6, y equal to 4, I get a true statement. If I do the same thing for the bottom equation, 2y minus 3x equals negative 10, plug in 4 for y and 6 for x, this is going to give me 8 minus 18 equals negative 10. That gives me negative 10 equals negative 10. That's a solution, but it's not the only solution. For instance, this lovely point right here, the point 0, negative 5, if I plug in x equal 0, y equal to negative 5 into both equations, it's also going to produce dueling true statements. If I go to the top one, the y equals 3 halves x minus 5, if I plug negative 5 in for y, and 0 in for x, I get negative 5 equals 0 minus 5. 
are negative 5 equals negative 5. If I take the same point, 0, negative 5, and plug it into the bottom one, I go 2 times negative 5 minus 3 times 0 equals negative 10. This gives me negative 10 minus 0 equals negative 10. That gives me negative 10 equals negative 10. So those are two different points that check. The point 4, 1 will check in both. The point 2, negative 2 will check in both. There isn't just you know, one solution that I could say, well, this is a solution, I'm done. There's infinitely many solutions. And when the two lines graph to be the same line, the word that we would use to write in our solution is that these systems are dependent. And the way we write my answer is using this notation. We use this ugly set builder notation. We say there's infinitely many solutions, all in the points of the form x comma y, and next to this vertical line, which I read as the word such that, I put either one of the equations because the equations are really the same equation. They look different, but they graph the same, so they really are the same equation. They're just different representations of the same equation. And this, to somebody that reads mathematics, says, if you give me a number for x, I could find a y, and that will be a point that works in both equations simultaneously. This is the way we can generate the infinitely many solutions. That's overkill. Not all um, Math 115 teachers will make you write the solutions like that, but all Math 151 teachers will. So I want to just prepare you for what you might see. So three things that can happen. Graphs could intersect in a single point. You get a unique solution. The graphs could be parallel lines, and there's no solution. The graphs can actually be the same line, and there's infinitely many solutions. When there's no solutions, I just say there's no solution, or the system is inconsistent, and I stop. When there's one solution, I just write the one solution, and I check it. When the lines are actually the same line, because they graph to be the same line, I write this fancy solution using this set builder notation that says the solution is the set of all points x, y, such that are with the property that y equals 3 halves x minus 5, or because the lines are actually the same lines, or I could have written the 2y minus 3x equals minus 10 there. When we get into the algebra in a minute for part 2, what's going to happen in the algebra? To know that this is the situation that occurs, both variables will cancel. And a true statement will remain. So as I go to do the algebraic techniques to generate the answers that I could get by graphing, like if something like this happens, if I'm left with 5 equal to 5, both variables canceled and the true statement remains, then this is what has happened. The lines are really the same lines if I would take the time to graph them. In the next two videos, I'm going to solve without graphing because graphing is painfully slow, and this, the algebra strategies aren't that bad. So the kinds of things, I might even get something like, you know, 0 equals to 0. Anytime the variables cancel and I'm left with a true statement, that's when we say there's no solution. If the variables cancel and you're left with a false statement, if the variables cancel and you're left with a true statement, then they're the same line and there's infinitely many solutions. If the variables cancel and you're left with a false statement, then the lines are parallel and there's no solution. All right, I'm going to can this video and we're going to move on to a part two and then a part three.